This morning, scriptures from Joshua chapter 6, 1 through 7. Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go out or in. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king, and all its strong warriors. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priest blowing the horns. When you hear the priest give one long blast on the ram's horns, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people can charge straight into the town. So Joshua called together the priest and said, Take up the ark of the Lord's covenant and assign seven priests to walk in front of it, each carrying a ram's horn. Then he gave orders to the people, March around the town, and the armed men will lead the way in front of the ark of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be ever pleasing to you. And may the distractions of this past week simply fade away as we open our hearts and our minds to what you would have us here. Amen. God is about to do something big. It won't be like it's been before, and it won't be what we expect. Will you be ready when God says go? Will you say yes? Joshua was ready, but it took courage, endurance, and faith to say yes and follow God's call. The book of Joshua takes place about 40 years after Moses and the Israelites had crossed the Red Sea. In the book of Numbers, Moses asked the Lord to appoint a new leader over the people, someone who will finally lead them into the promised land. He asks for a shepherd for his people. And the Lord appoints Joshua. And Moses lays hands on him and commissions him as the Lord instructed. Moses has now died, and God calls on Joshua to lead the Israelites across the Jordan River and take possession of the promised land. Joshua and the people, they're called to cross the Jordan River and begin open warfare against the people of Jericho. Jericho had two 30-foot high walls that circled the city. The inner wall was about 11 or 12 feet thick. And then there was a space, and then the outer wall, which was about 6 feet thick. There was also a heavy army, and they were waiting for them. This wasn't going to be easy feat. So I think maybe we can all imagine how Joshua might have felt. It took courage. Listen to God's encouragement and instruction of Joshua in chapter 1, starting with the fifth verse. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to the ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book, the law, the book of law, always on your lips. Meditate it on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So where does this strength and courage come from? Where do we get our strength and courage? I see two options. Either it comes from the world or it comes from God. The world will tell you that strength and courage come from within. 
Just dig deep and you'll find it. Look for it within yourself. Believe in yourself. The word courage comes from the Latin root core, which means heart. Think about that cowardly lion and his heart. So courage is a heart issue. So just dig down into your heart. These are all really common sayings, but maybe they're not so helpful when we're standing there shaking in our boots. We cannot have courage without God. Our courage comes from the gospel. Our answer is in these few verses in Joshua. God tells Joshua and us how to be courageous. In verse 8, he says, Do not let this book of law depart from your mouth. Meditate it on it day and night. And then in verse 9, The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. We need to spend time in the word daily. We need to pray And God will be with us. It's not about what we have done. It's only about what Christ has done for us. We have courage because we know who is with us. We know the full story. Jesus went to the cross and he rose on the third day. And because he is coming again, we do not need to worry. God commanded it. Do not worry. Joshua didn't know how it was all going to happen, but he knew what was going to happen. God tells him, in verse 6, it says, You will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. God guarantees victory in this military campaign and vows to never leave the Israelites as long as they obey his laws. Joshua listened, obeyed, and had courage that God would provide the how. So early in the morning, Joshua and the Israelites are at the edge of the Jordan River. And we learn in chapter 3 that the river is at flood stage. It's not a little creek to cross. It is very dangerous. But Joshua puts his courage into action, and they walk into the waters. The moment that their feet touch the water, and not a moment before, the waters part. And the Israelites cross the Jordan River, led by a team of priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant, and cross on dry land. Arriving on the other side, the Israelites commemorate this miracle with an altar of 12 stones from the riverbed that represents the 12 tribes of Israel. The Gospel Project says that courage is an act of faith built on our trust of God and what he has done, and what he promises to do. It took courage for Joshua to follow God's call. It took endurance. Now Joshua was about in his mid to late 70s when he arrived at the city of Jericho. This is after 40 years of wandering in the desert. And it's believed that he lived about another 30 years or so after this still leading the Israelites, and following God's call. God doesn't call us for one day. He calls us for eternity. There was endurance to Joshua's call to follow God. In Joshua 6, we find Joshua and the Israelites outside the city of Jericho. And Jericho is shut up tight. The people of Jericho did not want to be ruled by Israel, so they shut themselves up. They fortified the city against God. They were on full alert. And this would have been an impossible battle for the Israelites. But in God's eyes, the battle was already over. In verse 2, it says, See, I have delivered Jericho in your hands. It doesn't say, I will. It says, I have. God has already done it. The walls were still there, and the enemy was ready, but God says, I've already done it. Just keep following me, and let me show you. God's solutions are usually different than the ones we come up with, and I would say they are probably always different than the ones we come up with. And Jericho illustrates this point. No one would have come up with this solution. I mean, walking around a city for seven days and blowing trumpets and shouting, it must have seemed crazy. 
no one would have thought it was the right thing to do. But just because it's not the solution that we would have come up with doesn't mean that it's not the right one. Because God's plans are always better. Can you imagine Joshua telling the Israelites what they were supposed to do? Can you see the people of Jericho up on those big walls looking down at this whole crazy thing taking place? There's a Veggie Tales cartoon from a long time ago called Joshua and the Big Wall, and it depicts this story. And in the cartoon, the soldiers of Jericho are French peas because everyone is a vegetable. And they are up high on this wall, and they're looking down at Joshua, who is a cucumber, and all the rest of the Israelite vegetables. And this is part of their conversation. The peas, these Israelites, they say, what are you doing? And the squash, he tries to explain, and he says, we're going to knock down your wall. And they look down and they say, by walking around in circles? And he says, yes. It's not because we're crazy or anything. Our God told us to do it this way. And up on the wall they say, oh, that's a great idea. You just keep walking. And then this big musical number comes and they all start singing, these French peas, the soldiers. And they say, keep walking, but you won't knock down our walls. Keep walking. But she isn't going to fall. It's plain to see your brains are very small to think walking will be knocking down our walls. And they keep singing, and they keep marching, and they're throwing slurpees over the wall at them. But Joshua and the Israelites keep going. So the city of Jericho was about five or six football fields kind of squished together. So maybe a mile and a half to two miles around. But remember the priests, they're carrying the Ark of the Covenant and their soldiers ahead of them. And they did this for six days, and they made camp every night. And every time they marched around the city, they got a really good look at those big walls. Those big walls and all of the soldiers on top of them. They got a clear view of the obstacles. And on the seventh day, they marched around seven times. And on that seventh time, they sounded the trumpets, and Joshua said, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And the wall collapsed. It took courage for Joshua to follow God's call. It took endurance for Joshua to follow God's call. And it took faith. Joshua's faithfulness started long before he got to Jericho. Joshua was faithful when he said yes to Moses. And even before that. Joshua's yes, not fully knowing what it was going to entail, was a big step of faith, and it allowed God to show up in a big way. In Joshua 24, we find ourselves at the end of Joshua's long life, and he speaks to the nation, and he remembers God's great works on Israel's behalf, and he gathers everyone together. It's the last time that Joshua is going to speak to them, and he recounts their journey of faith, starting with Abraham. The Lord reminds them of his faithfulness, leading them out of Egypt, the faithfulness in the wilderness, and how he delivered them to the promised land. And this was not a blind leap of faith. They saw God's work and experienced his blessing, so it made sense for them to follow this God who had done so much for them. In verse 15, it says, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We have this verse up in our house. My husband and I have had it since we've been married. And it's to remind us of God's faithfulness to the Israelites and to us. This is why we follow God. Not because what we have done, but because of what God has done and what he is still doing. And then Joshua's tone changes a little bit. And he tells them that they need to make a choice. Choose to serve God or not. It's that simple. Choose God. We know from the Bible that the Israelites did not always follow God. They doubted and sinned and complained and turned away from God. 
but God is so faithful. The Israelites wanted to follow God, but they still worshipped false gods and idols. We do the same thing. We want to follow God, but we still worship our own false idols. We hide them like the Israelites did with theirs in their tents. But God is so faithful. Joshua said to them, Now throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. Joshua made a new covenant with the people, a renewal of the covenant. He placed a large stone under a tree as a memorial of what God had done and a reminder of the promise the people had made. Did the people of Israel fail? Keep reading. They sure did. Do we fail? We sure do. But God is so faithful. Back in Joshua 1, God tells Joshua what to do. Do you remember? Say yes, spend time in the word, meditate on it daily. Say yes, spend time on the word, and meditate on it daily. And in Joshua 22, 5, love the Lord your God, walk in his ways, obey his commands, hold fast to him with all of your heart and all of your soul. Joshua said yes. Will you say yes? It took courage. It took endurance. And it took faith for Joshua to follow God's call. The easiest part of following God's call and his plan is to say yes. We're the ones that make it complicated. Say yes and allow God to lead you on an amazing journey. Will it take courage? Yes. Will it take endurance? Yes. Will it take faith? Yes. But God will supply all your needs according to his riches of glory in Jesus Christ. Joshua didn't know how, but he knew what. We don't always know how, but because of Jesus, we know the what and the why. Don't get ahead of yourself. Take a deep breath. God's got this. God wants us to get where he wants us to go more than we want to get there. And he is awfully good at getting us there. The book of Joshua shows us God's faithfulness to his covenant with the Israelites to bring them into the promise of Abraham. This book points to the importance of covenant obedience before, during, and after God fulfills his promises. You see, we don't just need courage, endurance, and faith before we follow God. We need it all the time. It takes courage, endurance, and faith before God fulfills his promises. It takes courage, endurance, and faith while God is fulfilling his promises. And it takes courage, endurance, and faith after God fulfills his promises. And God will fulfill his promises. Joshua 21, 45 says, Not one of all of the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. Every promise was fulfilled. Do you believe it? Do you believe in God's promises? Or are you still holding on to the rope? Cut the rope. Today is the day. If you wait until you're ready, you'll be waiting the rest of your life. God is about to do something big. It won't be like it's been, and it won't be what we expect. But wow, it's going to be amazing. Are you ready when God says go? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Consecrate yourself, because the Lord will do amazing things among you. Amen.